Let's talk business. This is how we're moving yours forward. Standard Bank, moving forward. From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Gold mining company Sibanya Gold recently handed over 100 family units to employees as part of its housing project aimed at encouraging family living. Leandi Colver has the story. The 100 units handed over to Sibanya Gold employees in Lebanon, near the company's Kluif mine near Western Area in Gauteng, was built at the cost of 31.5 million. Each unit comprises two bedrooms with an open-plan kitchen and lounge area and are located in the secure Twelopele and Leha Park complexes. Sibanya Gold CEO Neil Froneman tells us more. This is, this is part of a, a, a much larger initiative. Um, we've made a commitment uh, of about 700 million which will be spent uh, over the next few years. Um, to date we've spent 500 million. Uh, these are family units and um, it's, it's a complex of 100 houses and um, it's, it's a phase in the, in the overall SLP. We, we have a committee which is uh, represented by both management and organised labour and uh, as you would have heard uh, people have put down their names for them, some as far back as uh, 2006 if I remember correctly and they've patiently waited and, uh, and they've been selected based on their needs and where they are on a list uh, in, a, in a very objective process. The 100 family units enables mine workers to have their families live with them in communities close to the operations. Such developments work towards changing the mining industry tradition of migrant labour. However, Froneman states that migrant labour will not be eliminated completely. There is a place for migrant labour. Uh, we've done a number of surveys and, um, and certainly there's, there's probably about 60% of our employees that actually want to live in high density accommodation. Our challenge is to make that high density accommodation um, a lot more palatable, improve the living standards, but at the same time we have to address the, the, the community issues, we have to get those migrant workers home much more often than, uh, than what's been done in the past. In my mind, that would make migrant labour an acceptable solution. I think it's here to stay. I think we've got to find solutions. We just can't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Other news making headlines this week. Localization will add to solar PV costs, but offers jobs and growth benefits. And the construction industry must deal with the great anger over collusion. Stipulating higher levels of localization in the rollout of solar photovoltaic solutions in South Africa would increase unit cost by between 6 and 9.5 percent. However, higher levels of job creation, especially in the manufacturing sector, could offset this downside risk, a new study shows. The green industry sector is a key IPAP sector, one of the new sectors uh, categorized as a sector with very high potential uh, to be a major contribution contributor to economic growth with high economic and employment multipliers. Uh, we did this not only from the perspective of the Department of Trade and Industry because renewable energy is uh, an indispensable uh, part of South Africa's economic growth and carbon mitigation strategy, but it must be accompanied by a set of strategies and concrete programs to ensure that manufacturing localization also takes place. The construction industry's engagement with the Competition Commission and the rest of South Africa remained a work in progress, says Group 5 CEO Mike Upton. The Commission earlier this year levied 1.46 billion rand in penalties against 15 companies in the industry for collusive tendering related to projects concluded between 2006 and 2011. But I do think that um, you know, we're into a place now where it's all on the table and how we react as, as industry and how our government reacts it's still a work in progress, I have to say. There's great anger, of course. And, you know, there's obviously a, a great deal of anger, particularly amongst black business. You know, they feel excluded. So there's a lot of mending to be done here. And is there going to be more sort of retribution or not? I mean, that's, these things are all open questions at the moment. 
all we can do is deal with what we see. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.